Hi everyone, so welcome to last part of all electronic component names, pictures, functions and how to test it. So basically in the last part we have seen the integrated circuits. This is basically the last component that we have studied in the last or the previous part. So let's move on to the next component. So here we have the CPU. Basically, this is another chipset, the CPU or central processing unit, as you can see here. So the CPU basically is the main important component in every motherboard. So the CPU is the component that take charge of managing the signals in the motherboard okay so for every cpu you will find the reference its reference of course and the frequency and the speed etc for example for this cpu as you can see here we have here 1.83 this is basically the frequency or the speed okay we have two here we have two mega this is the cache the L2 cache memory in the CPU and of course here we have 667 this 667 is basically the frequency or the speed of signals between the CPU and the North Bridge you know that between the CPU and the North Bridge or the GMCH the bus that connects these two chipsets we called it the FSP or front side bus and the speed or the frequency of this bus for this CPU equals 667 megahertz of course this is an old CPU but for the recent CPUs A7, A9 etc the frequency here is in gigahertz okay 2 gig or even 3 gig okay and of course here we have the model Intel okay so basically I have here a question here if we want to check this kind of CPU easy it's not like the James C hedge or the IC hedge or the, the graphic card that is connected daily directly to the motherboard this one you can remove it and try another one if you thought that this one could be the failed component okay so let's move on to the next component so here we have the ram as you can see or random access memory so for the ram or random access memory basically this component are removable you can remove it and check with another one no problem I mean if you want to check whether the RAM is the failed component or not easy you can just replace it with another RAM it's not like integrated circuits or other components okay so let's go on to next component so here basically we have a lamp this is electric lamp we have the lamp we have its its symbol as you can see over here so, so the next component is here we have optocoupler so here we have another very important component we called it optocoupler okay so optocoupler basically is used in power electronic circuit you cannot find optocoupler in laptop motherboard or computer motherboards but there is other component that do the same rule as optocoupler so let's talk a little bit about optocoupler so optocoupler optocoupler basically has four pins as you can see two pins here and two other terminals here as you can see and it contains inside it it contains of two small components inside it we have here what an LED diode as you can see this is a diode with two arrows means LED diode and we have a photo transistor as you can see so the, this is a normal transistor but we don't have here the base so the base it's not sensitive to current no to light so once for example this optocoupler it receives a current here okay 
once the current pass through this diode this diode will eliminate a light and then this transistor as you can see here we have here collector emitter and base so base it will receive the light here that's why we called it a photo transistor when it receives the light means it receives the control signal okay and then the signal will pass through here so basically the optocoupler is used in power electronic motherboard in order to adjust the output voltage okay so in the electronic motherboard okay we have you will find for example here the primary stage and here the secondary stage the input voltage for example is 230 and in the output voltage we will get for example 12 volt 5 volt okay so after all stages after i mean the voltage pass through the bridge rectifier through the electrolytic capacitor etc etc and of course the transformer we will get here 12 volts for example or 5 volt okay so this 5 volt could be exact voltage 5 volt or could be 5 volt 0.2 or 5 volt 0.5 or even could be 4 volt so in order to know exactly whether this voltage is good or not it will be applied to this optocoupler and then this optocoupler as you can see here will send a signal to do IC oscillator an IC oscillator and then this IC oscillator will speed up the frequency of signals in order to get here 5 volts okay so the the the, the purpose of the ocop optocoupler is to adjust the output signals we call it sometimes compensation to compensate yes to compensate okay the output signals okay so let's see and of course in order to check this optocoupler whether it is okay or not of course you can just check these two as you can see here terminals here we have a diode and here we have a transistor you will use the same working principle as you use when you check a transistor but and of course i have a, a, a specific video on how to test the optocouplers the optocoupler or opto isolator because we called it sometimes opto isolator so I have a specific video that you can watch and you will understand everything about optocoupler. So here we have a resistor. I, 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 maybe we have already seen the resistor. Anyway, the resistor, as you can see here, this is the symbol for the resistor. And over here we have the resistor. This is basically ACMD resistor, as you can see. No terminals here. This is ACMD resistor. We find this kind of resistor in motherboards, including computer and laptop motherboards. Okay, so here we have some numbers. You will always find here numbers. This numbers here means the resistance or the value of this resistors. So in general, always you will find three number or four number so always the two numbers okay the number one and number two are a normal number and the four the two number is number of zeros for example if you have one one two means one thousand and one hundred ohms if you have for example two zero two for example or one means 2000 okay so always the third number is number of zeros of course i have uh, an a specific videos okay where i discuss and i study the resistors how to measure it using the multimeter a practical course of course and all about the numbering of resistors okay so let's see the next component so here we have a diode basically we have seen 
uh, already do zener diode and the Schottky diode. We have seen that the zener diode is used to stabilize the current in the circuit, and the Schottky diode is always used in the output stage. Okay, in order to 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 make a voltage a continuous voltage. And over here we have a normal diode. As I told you before, that never replace a normal diode with a Schottky diode or the inverse, or replace a Schottky diode with a normal diode. Okay, because the Schottky diode is used in high frequencies, and the normal diode like, like this one is used in low frequencies. Okay, that's why. So here, as you can see, we have a normal diode. Always this hair line over here. As you can see, this gray line means the cathode. So here we have the cathode. Here we have the anode. Okay, we have cathode or negative terminal, and we have anode or positive terminal. In order to check using the multimeter this kind of component, you should put in the multimeter the diode option. Okay, and then put the black probe here in the cathode or here. And the red probe into anode means here, and you should get a reading about 700 door voltage or 600 door voltage or even 400 door voltage. Okay, and if you get a short or, or a buzzer, means automatically the diode is shorted because the diode sh should never be shorted to the ground. And of course, we use this diode sometimes for protection. You can find this kind of diodes. In the beginning of every motherboard or every uh, SMPs or switch mode power supply, in the beginning you will find that the anode is connected to the ground and the cathode is connected to the power rail in order to protect the circuit exactly like a fuse. Okay, so let's see the next component. So this is the last component here for this course. We have the CMOS battery or complementary metal oxide semiconductor. This is basically a CMOS battery. Here we have its, as you can see here, we called it just, well, okay, this is a CMOS battery. Okay, you can find this kind of CMOS battery and this kind of CMOS battery, just for, basically for laptops, uh, okay, and notebooks. And this one also for laptops and for, uh, of course, for computer motherboards. Here, as you can see, pay always attention to this reference. Here we have CR2022. Okay, okay, CR2022. Okay, because there is many CMOS battery batteries with different, uh, uh, different references. That's why. For computer, we have this reference, CR2032, okay? And of course, what is the purpose of the CMOS battery is, of course, to keep some seating and some parameters in the motherboard. When you, you unplug the, the motherboard or no power, you cut the power, the CMOS battery will take charge and keep that seating safe, okay? So thank you very much. This is the end of this course. Um, maybe it's about six parts or five parts I don't know so please thank you very much we're gonna see other video tomorrow so please don't forget to like the video of course if you enjoy it subscribe and share the video and for anyone who want to join, to join me in my Patreon page you are very welcome in that page I share in a daily basis many laptop schematics and of course, many tips, tricks, and secrets on how to repair laptop and computer motherboard. Thank you very much, and see you in the next video.